it is about uh, ai and ondc uh, you know something you know a very interesting topic and this session we are going to do with uh, you know with an extremely interesting you know uh, talented teams of uh, you know google cloud uh, uh, with slang labs and spine so uh, the session basically structured around how ai you know can be useful in ondc and uh, uh, both of these uh, are extremely hot topics uh, these days ai and ondc and you know coming together it actually becomes very very interesting given what ondc is trying to do uh, in uh, in the in india in a, as part of india stack as part of you know deeper penetration of uh, commerce in india uh, as as a population scale network as uh, as a network which is trying to bring you know smallest of the entities like smallest of the sellers and the, and and the customers in 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 like uh, remote towns and villages right so it's a very very interesting uh, you know uh, use case in my view for ai uh, where how ai can help uh, you know make this network accessible and frictionless for all these entities uh, that i'm talking about uh, so today I have uh, Nitin and Monojit uh, from Google Cloud who will talk about how Google Cloud is looking, uh, you know, at ONDC and how their technologies, uh, Google Cloud technologies uh, related to AI uh, can be useful in ONDC ecosystem and how as participants, as adopters and implementers of uh, AI in ONDC, how we can use Google Cloud technologies uh, in ONDC. So, so very, very interesting uh, discussion and, and presentation I'm looking forward. I'm personally very excited about, uh, you know, uh, what I'm going to hear. Um, then I will invite Kumar from Slang Labs, um, who is working on the search AI part. So, so before, uh, before uh, I, I get into the, you know, why, why search AI and catalog AI, the two things that I have picked here uh, uh, personally to basically showcase how AI can, can be useful in ONDC, uh, I'll, I'll show you the context uh, in, in like a couple of minutes. But Kumar is going to touch upon, uh, you know, search AI and Sanjay is going to touch upon the catalog AI part, uh, uh, you know, as, as, as part of their, you know, product. Uh, offering from spine spine.ai uh, so before i get into the the context part you know this i have shown it almost all my presentations that uh, trust is a very important part and ondc is building a lot of components to ensure this uh, you know you know the trust enhancement is there in ondc network so igm is one uh, rsp is one the the score which is has been uh, renamed as Trustmark only Trustmark. Just today we had a session in the morning. Uh, it's gonna get released very soon. The spec of uh, of of uh, of uh, ONDC score ratings. How you can rate how how you can rate a product, uh, a seller, and logistics provider. That framework uh, is is coming in like a couple of weeks, and it will be out uh, for, uh, for for to be adopted. So this trust. Triad is getting built as we speak. Uh, uh, IGM is going to get rolled out. The 30th June is the deadline that uh, ONDC has said that IGM has to be rolled out. RSP is also like, uh, you know, very actively being uh, pursued by everyone. So good part is that trust triad is getting built as we are speaking. This, the, then building the trust basically is a very important component of experience and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, uh, it's, it's it is very important that ONDC provides uh, a high level experience. And, and I've talked about this ONDC triangle of experience uh, in my previous uh, you know, uh, presentation. We talked about scalability, availability, and reliability. AI, in my view, is a very important component when it comes to availability here you know, of this triad. And, uh, and primarily, if you, if you look at, this is how the network looks like. Uh, a network have sort of compressed uh, where the buyer app and seller app is part of the network. The two edges of the network, which are the remote edges of the network, one is on, on the demand side and one is the supply side. The customers are on one side of that edge of the network. The sellers are on the, another side of the edge of the network. 
and these two edges, these two entities are trying to enter into the network. And this is where the scale is, right? This is where the large number of customers and large number of sellers are coming. Unless this journey into the network for these two entities is frictionless, unless that is minimized, it, it, you know, it is, it is going to be tough to scale the network in my view, right? So maximum experience of customer and the seller will come if there's a minimum edge fictions. Right? And this is where the AI can be very, very useful that for a customer who doesn't know English, for a customer who cannot type, how can they transact in the network? How can they use a local language you know, through voice-based search? Uh, how can they do that is, is an interesting problem you know, in DC network in my view. And how a seller, uh, you know, if he wants to sell, can can use, a, you know, uh, use, a, you know, one of the one of the major challenges that we have seen is sellers is the catalog is a big challenge. So how you know someone who 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 can build a very interesting layers of catalog AI, you know, they can use to enter into the network, uh, and uh, of course, uh, so 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 on the these two sides, that's why spine is there in this in this uh, webinar and therefore slang labs is there and and that's the reason i wanted to set the context why these two companies are there now google cloud of course plays across the ecosystem right google cloud plays from the one edge to the another edge and and they have like huge number of product offerings and and uh, and they have a lot of scale they have a lot of uh, adoption so it's, it is an interesting, you know, uh, you know, playground for Google Cloud also from an AI perspective, uh, and that's why Google Cloud is there. Plotch plays a role more in the network, and uh, we are trying to see how we can leverage uh, these technologies, adopt these, you know, partners so that the ecosystem actually builds using AI. That's the context I wanted to set. Up. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, you know, uh, this. Usually the webinars that we do are very, very interactive. You know, if you want to ask any question, uh, feel free to mute your, unmute yourself and, and ask the question. Um, uh, I'll start with uh, Nitin and Monojit. Uh, you know, welcome to the webinar. Uh, you know, we'd love to hear what you're building, you know, uh, in Google Cloud, how Google Cloud can help ONDC from AI perspective. Uh, okay. Welcome Nitin uh, to the webinar. Uh, how is the weather, Nitin? Wherever you are, I am in Delhi right now, and it it, it just rained. I think uh, the cyclone is uh, reaching okay. <laughs> Delhi. <also. laughs> okay, okay. Delhi I'm in Bangalore, and it's a lot of sunshine here. Not no yeah. rains here today. Yeah. So, uh, no, thank you, Nitin, for coming and and presenting Google Cloud. Over to you. Okay, thank you so much uh, for giving me the opportunity, Manoj. Uh, you know, this uh, this is a great uh, uh, you know uh, way to kind of reach out to. Uh, folks who are looking to kind of engage with ONDC and uh, you know companies like yourself uh, who have been already been engaged uh, with them you know can can is really doing a fantastic work and this is you know, gonna really help the community uh, i would just request uh, you know uh, monojit if you can possibly share your screen and uh, then we can run the uh, presentation which we have for uh, for the people yeah monojit you can share i've, I've, I've yes uh, yeah. yes no, yeah, i will now share now Uh, let me know once my screen is visible. It is. Yes. It is. Yeah. You can just make this uh, in a presenter mode now. Yeah. Should be now. Yeah. All good. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So Google for India uh, is what we call it. Uh, you know, Google is not new to India. You know, we've been there for long. Uh, you know, and uh, been touching. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so many people across uh, across India and across the globe. Uh, you know, and we have, uh, you know, presence across uh, products, you know, and then, you know, when it comes to Google, you know, we talk about scale, uh, you know, reliability and security, you know, I'm sure all of you would be using, uh, you know, the Google search, whether it is Android, you know, Chrome, Maps, 
and all of these are uh, technologies which are so relevant for uh, for for the for the for the for the ondc network participants technology service providers because at some point in time you know you will uh, find uh, there is a there is a need for uh, leveraging uh, this at scale and we've been doing this uh, uh, you know uh, at scale uh, in terms of a billion or one billion uh, uh, users every day uh, you know access uh, some of these properties and uh, we've been providing uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, 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 friction free services uh, we call it uh, to these uh, to the to the to the consumers and the citizens uh, you know uh, so coming to the and we um, me and monojit are part of google cloud you know while you have seen so many logos in the previous slide uh, you know, out, out of those, we are representing Google Cloud, uh, you know, and we have our counterparts for YouTube, we have our counterparts for Maps, which we interact with. Uh, but in this particular case, for now, we are representing Google Cloud, and this is our infrastructure, which have been, uh, you know, uh, represented on the screen. Uh, you know, in India, uh, you know, we have a region in Mumbai and uh, Delhi, but globally, we are uh, spread across globe. And, you know, uh, for anything, you know, when it comes to Google, it is a, it is a search. And for search uh, to make it uh, make it available across the globe, uh, there has a lot of investment which has gone into network. We are, you know, having our own network cables deep, uh, you know, in the sea, and we are managing those, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, you know the search is available across, and YouTube is available across uh, the globe, uh, and the same infrastructure is used uh, for um, uh, for for accessing anything which you are storing on Google Cloud. So you, so can you are doing Greenland and Iceland also. I saw. I'm just looking at this. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's covering the globe part. Of it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So uh, as I said, um, in India, you know, we are uh, because anything which we do, which has a government, um, you know, uh, in getting involved, uh, we need to meet uh, the government uh, regulations, uh, and so data sovereignty is one of the uh, major uh, requirements. Uh, you know, for that purpose, uh, you know, we have our data centers or region, we call it in India at two locations, in Noida and uh, in uh, in Mumbai. Both of them are uh, impaneled with government of India. Any of you who are looking to kind of get those, uh, you know, impanelment certificates or uh, other requirements around security, if you're engaging with government, uh, do let us know. We can help you, you know, meet those requirements, uh, you know, from a data center or from a, a cloud hosting point of view. And data security point of view. Um, yeah, uh, Monoji, just move to the next slide. Yeah, so so this is what we are uh, coming, uh, and Monojit will talk about more of these services. Uh, you know, uh, on the on the first slide, you saw uh, you know some of the uh, properties, but now here on this particular slide, you know, you have uh, all it takes to build a very powerful um, you know uh, platform or an app or any other service which you are looking to engage, uh, you know, or kind of, you know, uh, be available on ONDC. You know, we have solution from payments to ads, if you want to monetize through ads, and if you want, uh, you know, an application to be available, uh, you know, we have enterprise search, you know, which is the search which you use, a private version of that search is available for sellers and buyers to kind of make their catalog available. Uh, maps is there you know that uh, you know to kind of track the order and all of that then you have the big query you know which is the logistics platform you know or rather logistics which is the analytics platform which we are using uh, you know and it can give you deeper insights into the platform uh, and then the whole bunch of thing is surrounded by security you know the security is the uh, you know a, a day one job or a day zero job we understand that uh, you know, to keep this everything secure, there are a bunch of security solutions which are available. So, uh, uh, Munuji, just get to the next slide, please. Uh, and then, as I said, you know, we have all certifications in India. Uh, you know, uh, whether it is 2017, 18, SOC 1, 2, 3, uh, you know, uh, your PCI DSS for storing the personal uh, card information. You know, all these certificates, including the Ministry of IT Impanelment Certificate in India, is available with us. So, uh, and we follow and we rather comply to the Indian IT Act, uh, you know, 2000, 
so anything which comes when it comes to security you know it is uh, a very very uh, you know top priority for us so from so here scale onwards, is something uh, i heard like 1 billion users that's amazing yeah. <laughs> 1 yeah. billion users coming every day so that kind of scale handling is is really amazing yes. and security yes. you were saying basically you covered all the you know uh, you know all the aspects of security whether it's yes. government or whether it comes to yes. you know any kind of compliances right so yes. i mean yes. okay. because this this these are things which are needed when we are talking uh, you know uh, transactions of such nature and yeah. uh, we can't uh, have a after thought about security that okay now it has become big let me now secure the environment the security has to be a day zero job it has to kind of grow as the business grows Makes sense. You know, yes. so that's how we see security. So, uh, yeah, uh, Monujit, over to you, the team, uh, uh, the folks. Uh, Monujit will now take you a little deeper into our AI services because we feel that if we have to bring a differentiator or we, if we have to make, uh, you know, uh, a life of buyers and sellers, and if we have to make this whole platform, you know, uh, 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 and and get to the ease of use, AI has to be a a, a built-in thing. Yes. You know, and uh, that's where we're gonna touch. Uh, you have seen announcements around Bard. You have seen Vertex AI, Gen AI. Uh, you know, we have speech to text. So much. I will not take the thunder away from Monuji. So we will have some some glimpse of it. Uh, you know, in this uh, uh, in this slide deck. Over to you, Monuji. Hey, thank you, Nitin. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Great. So as uh, Nitin was explaining about the services side in one of the previous slide, you saw the uh, different levels of services and uh, starting from infrastructure to platform to data AI. So we will talk about the AI services as, uh, as uh, Nitin just mentioned, focusing on two of the very primary uh, and important pillars of AI that we have, right? So mm -hmm. in terms of data and AI, Google always has been uh, in the forefront in terms of research and uh, you know, the publishing papers and giving a uh, lot of, uh, you know, the new things bringing a lot of innovations into these fields, right? Um, now, uh, when it comes to uh, the discussions of AI, we started off with this Vertex AI platform. Vertex AI is basically a unified ML platform, right? That is the core. So whether you want to build your applications, whether you want to do some further research, whether you want to uh, use the Vertex AI with a low code platform. So that is also is one of the key thing, right? Um, there might be developers, there would be architects, there will be uh, end users who really want to uh, just leverage what is best of AI and then they do not need to do programming. There are data scientists who really want to play around with the data and then uh, you know get the results out of it. So. These four things which you see in the Vertex AI, starting from uh, bottom to top, the ML ops, then you build your custom workflow. For example, you have a set of, uh, set of data, right? That data set, you want to do some experimentation. Then you want to train, and then you want to get a view that what can be the predictions or the forecast of that, of that particular data set. So it's an inbuilt service. I will try to show you a few things uh, just in the best interest of time. I'm just going through that quickly. But the thing is, uh, you do not need to depend on anything else. At the same time, you are you are basically you know doing an end-to-end -end development of AI and ML sitting within Google Cloud using all these features. So, for example, you are uh, connecting. Um, uh, say, for example, you want to do uh, the monitoring of your models. You already have the models built by some open source technology, right? One of the good thing of Google Cloud is that we just do not support open source. We basically embrace open source, right? So whatever you build, how you integrate with Google Cloud without any changes, that is one of the things. That is not only for AI. I'm talking about the overall things, right? In AI, you build the models outside with some other technology, some other programming languages. You can easily bring in into the Vertex A platform to do the insights and do the monitoring and enhance the model as well. Now, that was the story for uh, you know the Vertex AI how you could use Vertex AI. For example, if I can quickly switch, um, if I have uh, something like, for example, if I have some kind of a data set, if I have some kind of a data set uh, or maybe, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, some of the texts in a particular language, I can very easily use an API. This is an API, which is, I'm calling, it's a, it's a REST API. I created a wrapper around it, but internally it is the uh, language translation API, right? I can very easily use that 
to uh, you know do the translation of this in any other language so if i mean just from one language can it take other... like a local language input also uh, manujit like local language the... as the as let's the say uh... i take uh, like say uh, uh, you know marathi and then yeah, yeah. i want to translate into correct correct you just need to pass so you can see here i am yeah. passing in a source and target right mm -hmm. the source can be your uh, local language code and uh, target can be any other code so we support almost all the local languages in india you can uh, you can do it that way as well got it the, the advantage is uh, this is inbuilt now this is a trained model which gets improved day by day and all this stuff now we are adding more and more features right it's almost all the indian languages are supported now uh, plus the global languages you can very easily integrate with these kind of things and build your use cases on top of it but some, and what about what, voice uh, sorry i'm interrupting but what about voice let's say i'm i have a voice text voice correct. speech and can it be in yes. hindi let's say marathi can it be taken yeah, very simple so you can actually use uh, the speech sdk then so we have the all these are decoupled services one is translation ai the translation api so what you see on my screen is a speech sdk integration i can actually do the synthesize of the speech i can uh, convert that speech into a text so that is the output of one api and then i take that output and pass it on to my translation api which can actually be uh, translating the text right so that is how you okay. can basically create your use cases around all these sdks which are and again i'm telling you the important thing is these are all inbuilt uh, pre trained models okay. which you can enhance that means you can train these models again sitting here in uh, you know vertex ai and then you can enhance those models as per your need that was Manujit, uh, uh, ashish has a question i just interject because i think yes. important to take a question ashish you want to yes. you want to ask thanks manoj thanks manoj yeah so it's really nice to see all this setup uh, with respect to google uh, vertex ai i have one question around can google vertex this translation uh, can it take multiple uh, language inputs like let's suppose on the ondc platform or maybe a buyer trying to put a special message uh, appended with his order in multiple languages hindi and english or maybe marathi and english and right. then you are trying to translate it to once again to a standard language as an output can yes. it do that yes the source can be a list of languages as well you can pass it on to that and then uh, it the output will be actually in a particular language so you can do that absolutely what if it's a mix i think uh, what uh, ashi yeah, if, uh, yeah. if it is a mix if it is a mix then you need to probably do i mean it's absolutely possible that in that case you might need to call efficiently the same api multiple times right the mix might not be in the same uh, one api call it can be multiple api calls but you can pass on the parameters and get the get the output maybe you need uh, some uh you know text tokenization to understand which kind of language it is first as inside input maybe that data quality check that is that is one of the things so uh, we have something called uh, detect the language so for example if i have a, a text like this for example i have a, a text written which is you can see is a mix it's a bengali it's an english and it's an hindi right so if i want to do some kind of uh, the detection of text it actually can detect that the first language which i said how are you it is actually with the confidence one it is english and then this one is a bengali so my mother tongue is bengali so anyway so that that language code and confidence comes back similarly hindi so in same api call i am passing on this to detect what is the language of that particular one then when you do the translation yes you have to again call the translation api based on that so that intelligence you have to build we are giving you the inference basically it will take the this snippets in the in the text uh, box is is a hindi this is english and you know those kind of stuff and then basically you take these and then you get into maybe a standard english language or hindi language output exactly right? exactly yeah. perfect got yeah. it but it it becomes interesting if if someone has written in a let's say uh, english kind of stuff right where it's very very hard to even so yeah so basically definitely those type of things are more of the things that you can do and 
uh, some bit of in, I mean the inputs are needed as well. But what happens here is the confidence parameter is very important. So mm -hmm. you can take a decision. If the confidence parameter is less than 0.5, you might decide to reject, or mm -hmm. you can you know refine your input. If it is more than 0.5, maybe you can say, okay, I will go ahead with that, right? So it will give you that, okay, I'm telling you, this is in English because mm -hmm. there is less Hindi, but my confidence is not that much. So that's how uh, you build your uh, use cases around that. Got it. But okay. I mean, definitely, we are always very much happy to work on such use cases. If you have those interesting things, let us know. We can uh, jointly work together. No, no, I'm quite sure ONDC will throw a lot of use cases. Exactly. Very interesting exactly. because... Uh, as yeah, well, interesting. But yeah, sorry, I I no want. No, no, absolutely fine. Ashish, hope uh, I could answer your question as well. Yes, yes, Manojit. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Now, what happens is, with all these things was in place and everything was going very hunky dory. Suddenly, this the generative AI, this all these uh, things came into the existence, right? And it was always needed because uh, while we are building the use cases, we were building the dialogue based use cases, we were creating intents, as you know, right, when we do chat, uh, probably, uh, you know, many of you are already have been building the uh, bot kind of things, right? You know that uh, we need to create intents, if I want to book an air ticket or flight ticket and all. But those are all were having one blocker that whoever is creating the intents, the developers, the architects, or the data scientists who are building that particular thing, it depends on them, right? What about if I can create a set of, uh, you know, a large model that can be trained, pre-trained with a lot of such texts so that the intent search becomes easier and I can create a more uh, natural or, uh, you know, more human-like conversational bot. So from that, the generative AI came in. Now, to let you know quickly that we have been, uh, you know, uh, creating papers and researches on these large language models. We call it Lambda, and then we created Palm, the Pathways Large Language Model, which we have been working on and doing it in 2017-18. And our purpose was primarily not to just create uh, this thing for the bots, just to make this thing more useful for larger use cases, how it can be used for a healthcare how this can be used more for uh, the manufacturing or the transport or the retail, right? So how the industry or domain specific things can be solved. So what you see on this screen, generative AI studio, generative AI APIs and the models is a complete suit that we have created dedicated for generative AI. So if I go to the console quickly, uh, you, you will be able to see that. So for example, this is our Vertex AI, which was already there. We added the generative AI uh, as a as a separate section where you can now actually get a set of models already built in. Now, the one of the thing that you have to understand with new generative AI, and this is something would be a very interesting use case for ONDC as well. A lot of use cases, in fact. Now, when these catalogs are need to be, uh, I mean, I mean, created, how the buyers and sellers or all kinds of network participants can seamlessly talk to each other, right? So, in these scenarios there are the, the the concept of model garden is which can give you some pre-trained predefined models with a very large data set where you can blindly depend on those models and then refine by you know giving your inputs so rather than you just getting like i was doing uh, sending a language to translate what if that i ask them to generate the text in a particular language just by giving my intent right so that is what we call a prompt engineering. So I'm giving. So this prompt. is basically for. So I'm just interrupting, but I just yeah. want to set here that let's say I want to develop, a, a, a generate like description of a product, right? Yeah. Is is it possible? Let's say I give a picture of the product and it can generate a description, or if I type, let's say, generate description for, uh, you know. Uh, Both ways. Say so for example, I want uh, image uh, images of um of a building say for example mm -hmm. i just type in so this okay. is my prompt now what we uh -huh. what i give in my prompt that is important we are calling it um the prompt engineering okay. so just to make sure that people uh, instead of uh, wasting time and creating the intents intents are something that i will be providing you in build you give me the prompt which will give me a set of images right now this is what i just used um as a as a console, it, it has an API as well. In the API, I can tell how many samples I want. 
Mm. Can I can I get a hundred uh, you know set sample? And what type of thing? I said images of a building, which is very deterministic. Can I give a more uh, you know uh, something which is very close to my use case? I can say I want uh, images of a particular product, right? Let's so say Parleji. Can it give like images of a Parleji? I'm just I can try that. Maggie one. noodle. <laughs> yeah, noodles definitely would should be uh, should be there, Manoj. I hope so. Because a lot of lot of our sellers actually struggle with the standard yeah. image of a of a product, let's say Maggie or a, those kind of right, stuff. right. Okay. So all these yeah. are copyright free. Sorry, I'm because people might use them. Otherwise, is is this copyright free or are the copyrights associated with them? No, no. So the so what will happen is so let me show you that as well. When you call it through an API, I was just doing it this way. But if you want to call it through an API. Yeah. For example, where was that? I was looking at this. Just give me a sec. So if you call it through API, what happens is um, I will give you, uh, let me go. So I will create a model already, which is, I mean, you can create models here mm -hmm. within the console to the API. Then you can train the model. And once you train the model, mm -hmm. it will be able to generate so let me show you how we do that through API and very, very simple and simple, but interesting way. I want to pass okay. this, uh, the same thing what I passed on, I can yeah. pass it here as, uh -huh. so it will give me a base 64 encoded, uh, you know, the string, okay. which you can now take it and dis display it on your own. So basically these are all the images for which you are not something, I mean, you are not getting the actual, you know, the JPEG link or something like that. So okay. the, it has written, it has written me as a base 64 encoded image, mm -hmm. which now you can decode and this, you know, deploy, or, sorry, I mean, display it within your app as you want. Okay. okay. So no, no copyright or anything. Uh, okay. That it, okay. Uh, right. So the thing is, uh, the, the easiness of this is you, you only give us, so again, Try to understand the, the difference between what we had and what we have now. What we had is still there. That means if I now try to give an image to the Vertex CI saying, please detect if that person has a cancer or some kind of a lump or whatever, or even this product is an ATA or Maginidus, it, it was still giving me responses. Those APIs are still working. But can we actually generate this kind of models by, just by giving a textual prompt? That was the intent of generative AI, and in the in the latest use cases, or uh, what I am just thinking for the OMDCPs, uh, for for OMDCs use cases, this would be a very interesting one, right? When you are trying to search in the catalog and yeah. uh, what you can bring in. Additionally, Ashish, you have any questions? Sorry, Ashish has yeah, raised yeah, hand. So, so just yeah, so the example looks okay here, but I have questions like uh, two questions. One whether these images are are uh, generated automatically or is it just fetching from uh, from the source, uh, you know, trying to match the text. So basically, there are two things. Uh, for example, if it is a textual generation for the images, uh, if we are taking it from the source, the source input is also given. So let me show you one uh, text prompt as well, so you get to know. So if I try to do some kind of like how to uh, how to cook a rice or something like that. If I try to say, it will actually give me a details of how you can do that, but it will also show me. So let me just do it slightly differently. Yeah, just a sec. So basically, to answer your question, that if it is taking it from the source, it will be giving you the the link of the source as well. Okay. Okay, so uh, if it generates itself from the from its own learning, yes, then it does. If it is from its own store, store, then there is nothing. But if it is actually generating or if it is uh, referring some of the resource, we give as part of the API response. We will tell you what is the source of that. So in that case, it Got will it. be a link. It won't be a the sixty four encoded. Yeah. Got it. Okay, I, I, and yeah. does it? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Word, word, uh, to Suppose it generates uh, four or five images. Can can I think about like uh, a use case where it can help me improve the uh, you know uh, uh, 
traffic generation on the ondc like which image is going to improve my traffic or for a seller that's you know, an interesting with, question yeah so th that means you are talking about the size or resolution of the image right yes as well as as well as which one will help me you know improve the business over ondc that's a very interesting question because that's it. a lot of people struggle with the CTR. I will get on this product based on the very yeah, interesting. The, yeah. Very so good. I think that will that will actually, uh, you know, con converge with how digital analytics comes into picture uh, with yeah. SEO as well. Yeah. Right. Very right. So I think I will check on that. But the point is, at this point of time, as I said, these uh, some of these models, as you can see, some of the models are already in GA. Some of them are in preview. The models are also getting trained behind the scene and getting, uh, giving us more and more out, uh, you know, better outputs. Uh, I will check that. But at this point of time, what I think is, you will get the image and the details related to the image. Uh, but based on the uh, image metadata that you get back. It's probably your decision. You need to take the decision that how you handle that in the ONDC network, whether you uh, see, for example, uh, you can always get, and that is part of Vertex A also. You can get one image, you can send a link of an image, and you can actually get different resolutions of the image, the thumbnails or the medium sized images, right? Okay. So you can actually maybe multiple calls you might need to decide that, okay, this is the perfect image for which the uh, bandwidth will be also perfect and it will not uh, hamper the performance. So that way, that inference should come from you at this point of time, what I can think of, but I will definitely uh, check on that, Ashish. Sure, uh, Kunal, do you have any question? Uh, yeah, uh, Kunal is right, Kunal is right from Builders. So just, uh, just a thought, so say for example, with respect to ONDC, suppose uh, there's a t-shirt which is worn by Salman Khan. I just take a photo of that t-shirt and I want to buy a t-shirt who is on ONDC, whoever is selling that T-shirt uh, in ONDC. So I can take a photo and then possibly uh, use that as an input to search on ONDC and uh, find out sellers. Primarily well, image also, search, right? You want to see the yeah, similar yeah. product as a image yes, search. Yes, correct. Yes, yes. Exactly. So absolutely, you can. I mean, that's a good point. Again, that's a good question. So we have the vision APIs, right? So in the vision API, you can pass on the images um, to to detect objects within that, right? So, or just pass on the image to understand like what kind of image it is, classification of the image. So that you can do, and therefore that I think, I mean, that is part of our Vertex AI suit itself. Okay. Now, um, I mean, like if you, so so there are two things. One is you pass on the image, you get the result that what kind of image is it within within confidence level that yes, I look that this image is of this type, right? The other thing is that you can create a set of, you can uh, upload a set of images of the similar kind within Google Cloud. We call it Vertex AI model training, right? So through API itself. So you can do it as a, as a prerequisite step before you get into this. You can send say thousand images into the, uh, into the model training and you can train the model. That's your own model now created in Vertex AI. Now, next time, you can point to that particular model to decide whether the 1001 or the 1200 image, the next image that I'm passing on, it has already been trained and intelligent. It can take a decision, yes, it's a shot of this product, of this brand, and we, I mean, it can respond to you, right? So right. that is the second part of it. You can always do it. Third thing is what I'm talking to you now, the, the opposite thing. You give a text and saying that I need the images of that, of this brand, so there are three things you understand that right let me you know yeah. repeat one once is you classify the image uh, which is the pre-trained model from inbuilt intelligence google cloud the google api will tell you this is the shirt this is the product of this brand yeah next you get a set of images train the model upload it and make the model intelligent as per your need so it, that the second part third is with the generative ai you just give your intent or prompt that i need product of this type it will generate images for you. So all the three are possible. Got it. Got it. Got it. No, the great. Uh, you know, great to see all these technologies. Why don't you just just a time check because I I know there's a lot of <laughs> lot of interest in AI. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I think I even in fact I was you know trying to go through these uh, examples instead of going through the deck because yeah yeah yeah. You know, no no makes sense makes sense. We actually got a lot of flavor of what 
how powerful uh, you know uh, ai offerings that you have in google cloud uh, right. go ahead yeah. yeah maybe i will just take i mean how much time i have manoj uh 2 3 minutes 2 uh... 3 minutes yeah, yeah. okay Yeah, I I think I will quickly utilize that. So rest of the things I've already talked about. One of the thing is this BigQuery ML. Slightly I'm digressing. It's a more on the data side. But okay. one thing while you are building your solutions on Google Cloud, this is extremely important. If somebody doesn't know how to create the models, they have the data set. you do not need to be a data scientist or a very much deep into that you can mm-hmm. use SQL query to create the model. So I will just take a minute to switch to that and quickly show you what it can bring so uh, just i i had the data set like this one like i have a drug data set which is of this kind for mm-hmm. example there are some 1000 2000 images now with that if i want to create a model tensor flow blah 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 all these things somebody doesn't know right so they can yeah. actually go on and create a model like this uh, they can use this to create a model just by writing a sql query so uh, we call it google sql in that yeah. you have the option to create a model with your own uh, algorithm we support a set of 10 15 algorithms okay. uh, arima k means and blah 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 you can use that to create uh, you know models of your need and then finally you can do uh, your forecast and predictions as well all sitting here so you are not going anywhere so you whatever you are doing in the vertex ai you take that vertex ai model programmatically into uh, into this you know big query import it here and then just can do a, a complete um, you know the inference uh, from here so it's very simple to do and do an exploration just with a click of a button so you do not need any other so this is the low code approach i'm talking about uh, if you have that Got you it. can create and then uh, the visualization everything is in your hand to do it further from here right so this is what you know this is big query ml is another important piece while you build your solutions on google cloud it's all the ai and then uh, big query as a data warehouse platform will actually help you to uh, do more insights into the model and then uh, you integrate with your use cases right great i just wanted to highlight this also please stay tuned we are all working with wndc on uh, something as a, called an accelerator where we are trying to make the experience much better for the sellers buyers as a seamless experience all kind of network participants we'll stay tuned we will come back with more announcements in this space and um, really wanted to have touch base on a lot of other things but in the best interest of time i'll st- i'll take a pause here and manoj thank you so much uh, for the well, thanks manoj it uh, definitely very interesting i learned a lot uh, you know uh, you know a lot of exciting stuff around ai you know i definitely tell my team <laughs> to look deeper into all these things and how we can adopt them you know in dc and uh, look forward to that announcement you know how google cloud you know you know is is going to provide uh, you know a, a solution in own dc ecosystem so that scalability and 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 how it can help i think i think i think look forward to that one monojit and thanks a lot nitin uh, and monojit uh, for your time uh, you know i'll i'll quickly switch gears given the interest of time i'll quickly switch gears and invite uh, sanjay uh, uh, from spine uh, and they have built a very interesting product and i i, th- I thought you know it would be good for all of you to see the, that product uh, it is uh, on the catalog ai side uh, and how sellers can basically use spine's product to enhance their you know catalog images and those kind of stuff and they've done some interesting work with swiggy So Sanjay, over to you. Uh, you know, would love to you know hear more from you. And yeah, yeah. Thanks, Manoj, for introducing us. And and it was a wonderful session, uh, Manojit. Thanks, thanks for taking us through that as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, I mean, as 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 you said, Manoj. So we are playing a a small part in the cataloging world of the e-commerce domain, where we are helping the sellers. Uh, do the cataloging on their own, just like a high-end professional photographer would do. Yes. yes. So what behind the scenes we are doing is, we are mimicking the behavior of a professional photographer uh, on product photography and all kinds of like object photography. So it understands how to shoot a footwear versus how to shoot uh, package goods versus how to shoot different types of objects. The camera will guide you with on 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 edge uh, deployment uh, deployed computation models. 
right? And yes. then it transforms those images into final product. So what I'll do is I'll quickly share my screen. And uh, so I'll, we'll split this entire presentation into two parts. First, I'll maybe take two, three minutes to take you through with what we have built. And then our team member Priyansha will take you through with the brief product demo video. So these two things we will do. Sure, sure. Sir, Give, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just sharing my screen. Can you see? Yes, yes, it's visible. Okay, perfect. So yeah, as I said, so basically, we are working in this e-commerce in the e-commerce domain to create self-serve smart cataloging tech, right? And we are going deep and deep in solving this problem. So uh, yeah, everyone knows the importance of image, so I don't need to spend much time here. So, yeah, so we have solved challenges for the large marketplaces like Walmart, Flipkart, Amazon, and uh, similarly like uh, large SQ, uh, uh, SQ-based like ecosystems. And at the same time, we have deployed the same solution for the sellers in the ecosystem as well. Right. So let me take you through with uh, how we are solving these challenges. So behind the scenes, we have created a set of image validation models and set of image transformation models, right? And we have deployed all of these models into a very uh, highly intuitive e-commerce application as well as, as a set of APIs, right? So which uh, APIs are basically deployed for the marketplaces and apps is for the sellers. So this is where we have distinguished these two. So if you see, this is how like the entire ecosystem works where you feed in the images, it will give you back the uh, high quality images and there's this app version. So a lot of validation and transformation models, I'll take you one by one. So let's say this is a piece of lipstick. So it will auto detect the crop part of the object. It will auto detect blurred and, and exposure part of the object. And so this is all validation models that I'll take you through. And then we'll talk about the transformation models as well. We will also be able to correct these, these, uh, these anomalies or the issues. So profanity, like so marketplaces has uh, uh, have all the images coming into their portals, right? So we automatically detect what kind of conditions they, they want to avoid. Uh, band item, again, part, part of that system mode itself. Uh, so yeah, we, we are also able to detect uh, watermark, I say mark, non veg labels, all of these things. Like we have studied e-commerce needs in a very depth and have tried to come up with a specific solutions packaged into one for the marketplaces and the sellers. So let's talk about the transformation here where a set of footwear is uh, background is removed, then automatically a background is added and, and, and then uh, almost realistic shadow is add, added for the system. Right? So this is one set of model that we have where we transform. Second is we auto detect the tilt of the image, no matter what the category is and we correct it, correct the alignment. So using the APIs, we also detect and correct the exposures of the image. Then there are packaged goods which you are not able to shoot properly. We have built a model that, that can auto auto correct the uh, the the, <coughs> the fold part, right? We auto remove the MRP dates, all of these things, auto extract the information from that particular package. So this is applicable across all kinds of packaged goods. So basically that Sanjay, I can shoot, uh, you know, even like a crumpled you know, for, for yes. a package and you will make yeah. it right, right? It's very uh -huh. interesting. Of course. Yeah. It should not be like uh, very, very crumbled, <laughs> but, but you know, up to this, this, this issue, we'll be able to sort it out. Got it. Then, then of course, swatch creation, combo creation. So you supply a set of objects, we'll be able to give you, uh, this, this is the, like the, you have studied the standard models of showing mm. the images and have built a model that can work there, right? So image upscaling is like the uh, standard part. So we understand what is the margin requirement for Amazon versus Flipkart versus Walmart, all these companies. Uh, and we, we auto adjust the images and we also upscale the images, multiple such, such parts are also done automatically. Then background extension, if the images are cropped, we are able to extend the image to fill up the remaining part, right? So in painting solutions, we have implemented image sequencing, right? So one of the uh, <coughs> questions we had here is, can, are we able to auto detect which images should be uh, should be how the images should be sequenced right so we have built certain kind of model that understands and al also sequences those images it very is, interesting because this hmm. is something that we, we we face a lot of issue where seller is not able to decide who which should be the first one yeah exactly one. exactly yeah. 
So we we have solved this problem as well, and this is deployed live on a lot of large marketplaces. Got it. Right. So this is a standard which uh, anyone can do. Uh, various parts of the images are deployed. Uh, this is a mobile application where where we have deployed all these models that we have shown, so that the user can be is able to shoot on their own and 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 go live right away from the application. Right. And uh, this is the dashboard through which they can manage all the inventory. They can manage various platforms and uh, do a lot of like uh, uh, work here. Then APIs and SDKs all 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 available. So it's fine impact. All of these uh, we work with a lot of like uh, uh, marquee clients. And let me just hand over uh, my sorry, screen. Uh, to, uh, Ashish has one question. I'll just take. Ashish. Yeah, sorry, I'm keep asking this question. I think no, these no, are no. interesting use case learnings. Yeah, so. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, fantastic uh, uh, application here with the use of AI. Uh, my question is like, if you right now you show example with one taking one uh, image and then trying to improve its quality. But what if yes. if we have multiple, let's say, uh, loose items like rice, which comes in multiple varieties? Like, sure. can it take multiple imports and then give it to me, uh, uh, you know, directly all the uh, you know, quality images. Mm -hmm. Like rice. <laughs> yeah. If it's a loose item as well. Ah, okay. Got so it. Basically so, loose item. Are you saying, can it be packaged and presented? Yeah, in if, a, it like not a, packed, if it is not packed. Not as well. packed. Got it. Got what, it. what do you, well, sorry, I'm not able to understand. I don't know. Sanjay. Yeah. I think I, I've got the use case. For which, okay. So sure, sure, sure. The thing could be that let's say the uh, rice, loose rice is kept on a, on, on a, on a plane. Uh, space yeah can you shoot it and, and present it in a bowl or something so we, we are we are actually if, if that is the use case we have done it in, in case of food where we click uh let's say uh, a burger or a pizza and present it in a plate uh or or, or a bowl or uh, these, these kind of places rules so we have done these kind of uh, items as well in the food and we have deployed the same tech in swiggy so this use case in certain other form is already solved by us so yeah, rice is one of the. But can you do it for multiple uh, varieties? Uh, uh, you know, uh, so let's say uh, two, three images of the loose rice are uh, there. For example, when you visit Dimar, you know, you saw a lot of uh, loose rice uh, uh, stuff uh, there available in different varieties, and you took a uh, uh, you know uh, pick of it, and then you are trying to understand which one uh, will get better. Uh, quality with your model, uh, you know, and then uh, can, can it help a, as a use case? Uh, so Maybe. the the reason being, you know, if you think from a small seller perspective, you know, those mm -hmm. many of them will have a loose item selling in the local community market, right? And ONDC is what is trying to uh, bring uh, bring them up, level up their game in e-commerce. So sure. if if these things, you know, and even they don't, they they are they face a lot of challenges with respect to cataloging their their products for the loose loose uh, item. So, if this image approach as well as can, uh, you know, looking at it, uh, uh, different varieties of uh, uh, you know rice or other products, yeah. can, if it can give it back a better quality, plus it, if it can give, generate a QR code on it. You know, I think it's that, that can solve a lo lot of problems. Yes, Ashish, so doable. My email is there. Why don't you just send me uh, a basic, uh, like sure. maybe the poor after email that you expect, and I'll, I'll come back to you after the meet. Sure, Sanjay. Thank no, you. Definitely, Ashish, a very good, good use case. I think you can connect with Sanjay offline. Uh, I think he'll be able to help you. Uh, Monojit, uh, uh, you have raised hand. I'll, yeah, uh, very, very quick question. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Sanjay. Um, uh, the quick question is on the uh, on the people who are using it in a very low bandwidth area. So, do yeah. you support these models to be also embedded in your offline? I mean, I mean, does it thing does this thing work offline, or is it something to be always connected? No. So, so what we have done is we launched this application in in case of automotive first, right? So, an automotive one of the use cases was the shoots were mostly happening in basement or far off places. Right, so we optimize some of the use cases to work in offline world as well, but not on e-commerce. We have deployed it yet, but something which is in our pipeline where we can make it work entirely offline, and whenever the network bandwidth appears, it will it will do the job. Okay.
Yeah. Basically, so you embed uh, your model into either on iOS edge. or Android. Okay. Yes, yes. And then on, on the edge, we have deployed a lot of models. Camera basically is on the edge. Fantastic. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, uh, Sanjay, sorry, <laughs> we are we are running out of time. But uh, in half minutes, I... just just we need if they... sorry, yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. Okay. Just just one and a half minutes. Sure. sure. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll... Uh, hello, everyone. Okay. Answer the side. This is the uh, app video that I'll be showing you guys. So we have some e-commerce app live on Android and uh, iOS. User can select the category that he needs to show them, and after giving the permission, we guide the uh, seller with the help of overlays. These overlays will basically tell the seller at which position you need to keep the product. Uh, See, I'll just pass forward for the sake of time. So these, uh, these guidance can ensure consistency across the marketplace when the seller is shooting, right? These are the standard uh, sort of uh, angles that we have seen. Now, once we use this with marketplace, the images that the user just shot, are optimized for the marketplace that the user is shooting. When, when I say optimize the resolution, the margin, shadows, background color, all of these adjustments are done. So the seller does not have to, to bother about the output quality. I will just show you the output. The, see, the outputs that are optimized for the marketplaces are generated in, within seconds. The standard angles that are used in e-commerce. <clears throat> this great, is no, the great use case of AI. <laughs> when I look at it, I get very excited because I can see how, you know, uh, Sanjay, your product, people can use them in ODC ecosystem and, and uh, basically use it for a lot of image enhancement. Yeah. And auto detection, and you know, and, and they can okay. they, they can offer a lot of their headache to you. <laughs> so uh, great! Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Sanjay, for this. You know, I, I really appreciate you showing your product, and you know, very excited to see this always. Uh, uh, so I'll quickly now sorry get to Kumar, who is building another interesting one on another side. So Sanjay is talking about. Uh, has talked about the catalog side, which is a seller side, and and Kumar is working on a very interesting thing on the on the demand side, you know, customer side. Uh, and when Kumar showed me the product, I got very excited. And Kuna, Kumar, over to you. Uh, you know, Kumar is from Slang Labs. So over to you, Kumar. Hey, thanks, thanks a lot, Manoj. And and Sanjay, congratulations. It looks so awesome. It, it is like really done. And uh, I really like the way you made the the video and the presentation is really nicely done. Right? Congrats thanks. again. Okay. Okay. So for one or one, let me just quickly jump over to the presentation, right? And I will talk everything from there. Hopefully, you guys can see the video. Yes. Yes. Again, th th thanks, everyone. Again, I'm Kumar Rangarajan. Thanks, Manoj, for this opportunity to be able to now share. So I'm one of the co-founders at uh, Slang Labs. At Slang Labs, we are, as Manoj already introduced, we are on the consumer side of the story. We are, we call ourselves an omni search assistant company. I'll again explain what that terminology basically means. And essentially, our whole byline, like it search goes beyond the bar, right? Because it's not just about catalog search. There's a lot of information that a consumer actually is looking for when they are using your app. Like, how do you know, unify all of that experience under search? Right? So that's the whole thing. It's not just about catalog search. And so, a quick brief about the company, a quick introduction. So, we are, uh, uh, founded in 2017 by the team which built another company called Little Eye Labs, which was acquired by Facebook uh, way back in 2014. So that's our uh, background. And uh, the founding team has actually worked on a lot of uh, interesting companies around the world, uh, including Apple, Rational, IBM, HP, and a bunch of uh, stuff. And we are now backed by Google. Google is one of our investors as part of this uh, venture. And we also have some interesting marquee uh, investors, including people from OpenAI, who are uh, backing our company currently. Right? This is just a quick introduction about the company. So we have two core products. Uh, Manoj, you've only seen actually one. So I'll show you two. Okay, okay. Uh, actually, it's actually launching the new product as you speak right now. Right. So this is two new uh, two products. Our first product is the Conva voice search product. Right? 
It's a voice search that can sit on top of your catalog. There's a search bar. It's uh, where people now look at, to be able to now look up items. That's the core way people discover products inside your application. Like there are but a lot of challenges that people have when they're using the traditional ways of typing to be able to look up. Starting with like one, it is slow. You have to be able to not type all the time. Second is like people might not know the spelling mistakes. They might, might not know the spelling of what they're looking for. Simple things like cucumber. Is it KU cucumber or is it CE cucumber? Right? It's not. It might not be obvious for everybody. It might seem very obvious for people sitting in this room, but for a lot of people, it's not very obvious. Yeah. And the third thing is like when people are, they think in their vernacular, they think of Pias, they think of Vendakai uh, in Tamil. They don't think of it as onion and lady's finger or okra. Like they think in a very different ways. Now, when they start typing Pias, your product might not even have it. Your backend might not be optimized for it. Their keyboard might be stuck in Hindi because that's what they're using in WhatsApp. Uh, and then now they now try to look for it. Now, Hindi will not be understood by your application out of the box. So all of those are challenges that exist typically in a discovery use case. That's what our first generation product was solving. It's a smart multilingual voice assistant, voice assistant that can be simply added on top of your existing e-commerce app. It's super trivial. It works as simple as this. It's a mic button that you can place anywhere in your application. Either it's a floating mic button or it can be next to your search bar. It comes with its own UI and everything. It, people cannot speak. Uh, sorry, uh, Kumar, I'm not able to see your screen changing. I, I don't know if it's for me or for others, but oh, damn. It, it is just showing slang labs. Oh, damn. It's still in the slang labs page. <laughs> it is not changing. Yes. Oh, my God. I've been moving on four or five. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. We could understand what you're saying. It's just, it's just that. Uh, yeah, okay. So I don't know where <laughs> we are right now. Uh, oh, shoot. Is it? I am right now talking, showing a video about work on why such. Is it even obvious? No, no, it's not. It's just showing me blank, black screen with, you know, slang labs. Oh my God. Okay. Let's just try again. Sorry. I don't know what's going on. So we get the real product is Kumar with your voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can you guys see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Now, so now, now it's coming. Yes, yeah, yes. So now Conva voice search is there any I just explained. And then the, uh, this is the quick short demo that you can see behind the screen, the mic sure. button that the user is now clicking. And you can now, I don't know if all of this is visible, the user can now speak. It's able to now translate, he said, Tur Dal. And then it was able to now understood, understand it, extract the right keywords, convert it to English Tur Dal. So that because your app will only maintain all the SKUs in English, right? you are not going to maintain it in different languages. And then the user can now do the search the traditional way. Right? We act like a simple overlay on top of your existing application to be able to now allow people to be able to discover products very simply, right? And uh, we, we actually use underneath use Google, but we're able to now make that experience of uh, using Google even more better by, because we are optimized for e-commerce use cases. So we do a lot of uh, things on top of it to be able to now optimize the experience for end-to-end -end accuracy for your specific SKUs, right? And we have objectively shown, we have done benchmarking reports where we're actually 46% more accurate end-to-end -end accuracy. There are a lot of things that attribute to end to end accuracy. So we are able to now show they're actually more accurate. And it's and it's a full on assistant. It's not like an API that you have to be able to now call something. It's a simple SDK. It, it comes with its own UI. It's an assistant that you can embed on top of your existing e commerce app. All the complexity of building the voice assistant is all taken care by us, right? Like this is the, the left hand side is like if you have to build yourself using APIs, you have to be able to now take care of every single thing like translation, speech to text, NLP. All of those components you would have had to now uh, bundle into your experience, build a conversational layer. What if somebody says this? What if somebody says hello? When someone says good morning, you don't have to blindly search for good morning or hello. You have to know what is it that the user is saying and contextually react to it. But the other side with slang, everything just comes out of the box. The whole voice search assistant is coming as a service for you. You just pick your domain. Oh, I'm a grocery guy. I'm a pharmacy guy. I'm a beauty guy. You just pick your domain. Everything else is automatically taken care by our, our platform. Right. So and it's not just search, right? I'm not searching for Tudal, and but I want to go through the whole transaction piece, right? Yes, uh, you can do that too. You can, you can, you can like say, hey, show me, check out. You can, I, I want to check out. I want to see my offers. Where is my cart? Where is my orders? So all those, it's not just search. It can go, even things that are like navigating across the various parts of your application can also be done using this. Right? Got so it. All that is all. So uh, basically the whole journey of, yes. of transaction can be through voice, right? Can be run, driven through voice, right? And the whole we do is like, it's a voice is augmenting your visual journey. So people can use the app visuals where they make sense to be able to use, where it makes sense to use voice, they can use voice. Right? It's, it's very naturally interplaced between both these experiences as you do. So it's not like a chatbot where it 
where you the entire thing is conversational. It's a layer that sits on top of your app. So that's the whole uh, beauty. And this is currently being powered, powering a bunch of e-popular apps uh, in India. We are currently an India-focused uh, company. The Modi's apps uh, are all using us, and some smaller apps, B2B apps, are also using our. Uh, hey, are you able to see those logos? Yes, I yes, I, I can now see. Yeah. Okay, but don't worry. <laughs> Sorry. So, so that's the first generation product, which is a, a search experience on top of it, existing search bar to be able to do and some kind of a goes beyond the search bar to be able to now even navigate to various uh, uh, info parts of your application to be able to now complete transactions uh, using on top of your application. Now with our next generation product by bringing in the power of generative AI on top of our existing product, we are now able to now take the search experience to a completely next level, right? So that's what we will now uh, show you. So this is like, imagine if there's an intelligent search assistant that is now sitting inside your e-commerce app that is allowing all kinds of capabilities, starting with like semantic search. Oh, my screen is moving much more faster than I expected. So semantic, hey, why, why is this moving like a video? What? I, I can see that could be integrative this thing. Yeah. Yes, it, it, it moved quickly. So anyway, I think it's just catching up time. So it's semantic search. If people could now search for things like uh, what is a, uh, like, oh my, it's just moving without even. I think it's just playing and it just, just playing the video without, without even looking at something yeah. must be animation is screwed up. Sorry. So it, it could do, uh, anyway, uh, I think it's figured out time is running. So uh, it just moved. So, but essentially like it could, uh, where instead of searching with keywords, right? A sugar onions, what if you could start with their higher level intent? I am trying to cook palak paneer, show me uh, the ingredients for it. I, I have a headache, show me some medicines for it. I am going for a marriage, uh, tell me what I should wear. Right? Like it, mm -hmm. it starts with a very high level intent. So basically the whole cart will be, get built up, right? Exactly. The cart can be built up so much more easier by being able to discover those semantic things. And not just that, it can even do things like when you're looking at a particular product, one of the reasons why people drop off is like they have a lot of questions about the product, right? You have a big PDP page, which has a lot of information. People have done reviews, yeah. people, but it's very hard for someone to find answers, right? So how do you now ask any kind of a question that can be answered by that PDP page? Like our assistant is now able to search even there. And not just that, even your existing product company level information, what is your return policy? Uh, where is your nearest store? What is your show times? All, all kind of information that is there somewhere in your website, but very hard for someone to be able to find that. All of that is unified inside a singular search assistant. Whether it is you're looking for your product, whether you're looking for uh, semantic uh, top level information, or you're looking for a particular uh, company level information, all of that is integrated into a singular search experience. And this whole search experience is multilingual. Right? Even if your app is English, but you can still allow people to be able to know, talk to it in Hindi, Tamil, and various other languages without your app fundamentally changing. Right? So that's the whole uh, thing. And this can be very trivially, very relatively, very easily added on top of any e-commerce app. It's not custom built for any specific thing. It's a, it's a, it's a fairly easily addable to any kind of an e-commerce application. That trainable around that. So that's what our second generation product is. That's what is called as an Omni search assistant, which Got is it. the search across the entire app and not just catalog search. And this is built by leveraging generative AI on top of our existing platform. So oh, I just want to show you, quick, uh, show you a yeah. quick demo of all this is like, okay, this is all theory I've shown. Like, can I just show you a quick video? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I definitely want to see. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear the audio now? Yeah. Yeah. What is your view of this product? How to cook butter chicken? Show me ingredients for palak paneer. Search traditionally has been a very transactional activity, right? Like you just ask for a very specific item, the app will be able to give you that specific item with some choices around there for it to be able to do. What if that search experience could be transformed significantly, right? where the user doesn't have to start with a very specific item, but can now start with their actual intent. Let's see how that would look like. Add onion, tomato and coconut to my cart. Adding onion, tomato and coconut to your cart. How to cook butter chicken? <laughs> Marinate the chicken in a mixture of yogurt, lemon juice, and spices for at least 20 minutes. Heat oil in a pan and cook the marinated chicken until brown. Show me ingredients for palak paneer. 
Hi everyone. I'm super excited to announce the launch of our latest generation of our product Conva 2.0. Conva which stands for conversational in-app voice assistant, right? Just to be clear, 2.0 here does not refer to an incremental evolution from our Conva 1.0. It's a generational shift. Let's see what I mean by that. The original generation of voice assistants typically started out as a simple search assistant, right? Where next to your search bar you put a mic where people can now speak to it to be able to now look up certain items. It's a simple speech to text engine which you just take whatever you speak and pass it down to the search engine, right? And that's the sort of experience that used to work and anything conversational will just print. That's our, that's how the world used to be. With our first generation product, we were able to now make this experience much better, right? By allowing natural sentences where users can now speak natural commands to their apps and the system is now able to now understand that and still extract the right keywords and pass it down to the search engine. And you could speak in your own language too. And the system was still smart enough to be able to understand Mujhe dikhao. and convert it to English dikha rahe and still pass it down to the application. But the power stopped there. With our second generation product, we want to be able to take this experience so much more further. Convert 2.0 solves four major problems for businesses. Starting with, it helps you increase your average cart value by allowing naturally for customers to be able to now add more items to cart. Conva 2.0 can also be natively integrated with the existing type search experience. It reduces drop-offs by being able to now help them find the relevant information right there at the fingertip. They're looking at a particular item and they're asking, hey, what is the sugar level on this item? Sugar, right? Boom, the answer just comes. The nutritional facts of the happy juice. Are there any allergic side effects on these items? The most common side effects of the world. It also increases the customer experience and then overall makes the customer happier and not shift out of the app to be able to now find all the information they're looking for. return policy allows you to return products within five days of delivery. Finally, because it's multilingual, it's able to now help you to now get more customers to be able to now bring in non-English speaking audiences to your app. Isko vapas karna hoga to... Searching for return policy. Now you know what all the excitement is all about. Conva 2.0 is built on top of our existing 1.0 voice search assistant which is already powering the voice search experience of many popular apps in India. 2.0 brings the power of generative AI on top of 1.0. Currently we are working with a few beta customers to be able to bring this technology to life. If you are interested in trying this out, please check us out at slanglabs.in and sign up to our beta list. Thank you very much. A great. Uh... Why this hey, by the way, did he just say 2.2 or did he say Conva Omni? Because that's what we're building. I don't know what he's building. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of my spiel. No, no, great, Kumar. Thanks a lot for this product demo. I really love the product. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, I, I, I can see, you know, why it's a game changer. You have taken the product to the next level altogether. Right? Uh, Thank you. Quite sure. Thank you. ONDC, all the participants of ONDC will be, will, will be excited about the product. So thanks, thanks, Kumar, for the demo. Thank I know you. Ashish, you have a question. Unfortunately, we run out of time. Uh, so in the interest of time, you know, we'll we'll uh, wrap up here. Uh, thanks to Google Cloud team. You know, thanks to Sanjay and thanks to Kumar uh, for for you know uh, both Nitin and Monojit uh, from Google. Uh, I hope you liked it, uh, all of you, uh, you know, uh, AI in my view is a game changer, you know, the products that we have seen here, you know, I'm quite sure a lot of people will build a lot more products, uh, you know, uh, around ONDC and, 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 uh, and, and make ONDC a network where, you know, it becomes like a high experience, high trust network uh, and, and make it a very successful network. Thank you again. We'll meet again, you know, next week uh, on, on Friday, 5 p.m. And till then, you know, goodbye, take care. Uh, have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Hey, thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot for this. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much.